This is Basic Concepts in Geography for AP Human Geography. This is Chapter 1, the final lesson. I want to start today by asking a review question. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about latitude and longitude and time zones. And then ask a few questions to make sure we understand the concepts. All right. So here's a quick check, understanding check. Which of the following maps would have the largest scale? World, continent, country, state, or city? I hope you selected city. City would have the largest scale. The smallest scale would be the world. All right. We probably have all learned about latitude and longitude somewhere around 6th or 7th grade. This is how we locate specific places on Earth's surface. It's called the geographic grid. We use both imaginary lines of latitude and imaginary lines of longitude. And if you're looking at a globe, the latitude is going to be going around the globe I always begin by looking at the equator. The lines of longitude go from one pole to the other pole, and they are, and they are continuous. These are the basis of using very specific locations on Earth's surface, and it's also how we break the world into time zones. The time zones run along the lines of longitude. For instance, here in the United States, we have four time zones on the continent, six time zones if you include both Hawaii and Alaska. And I am located in the eastern time zone here in the yellow. And although the lines of longitude aren't exact, you can then see that each line that intersects our continent creates a different time zone. So longitude are also called meridians. These are arcs that connect the north and south poles like I just showed you on the globe. The first line of longitude is called the prime meridian and it's located in Greenwich, England. And so it's given the label of zero degrees longitude. And we move from zero degrees longitude to 180 degrees longitude away around to the international date line. And we measure the distance from the zero degrees longitude by speaking of it in terms of west or east of the prime meridian. Does anybody know why the prime meridian goes through England? If you know a little bit of history, it's because in the time that this was written, England was really the most powerful place on earth. They had an empire, right? And so we begin here in the heart of uh, power. Now the lines of latitude are circles or parallels drawn around the globe. They all run parallel to the equator. So as I pointed out earlier, I always look at the equator as the beginning of the latitude. That would be zero degrees latitude. The North Pole is 90 degrees north latitude, and the South Pole is, is um, 90 degrees south latitude. All right, so the equator here is zero, so we go 90 to the north and 90 to the south. To be even more specific, we can break these degrees into minutes and seconds. Okay, and here's another graphic to show you here. The line of latitude to 90 degrees north or to 90 degrees south. The equator at zero degrees and then we measure our longitude in terms of east and west as pictured here. So lines of longitude are every 15 degrees, and that is roughly a time zone. The international late date line is at 180 degrees longitude. So that's 24 hours ahead if you're moving towards Asia. So here is the prime meridian, zero degrees, and if we move west towards Asia, when we come to the international date line, 
we are 24 hours ahead. So let me ask you some questions. Let's practice navigation and let's practice telling time. Number one. Imagine that you are aboard a ship on September 21st, sailing along the equator. Glancing upward, you notice that the sun is directly overhead. Your watch is set to Greenwich time and reads 6 p.m. What is your longitude? A, B, C, D, or E? I would pause the video now and see if you can figure this out. The answer is A, 90 degrees west of Greenwick. If it is noon on the boat and your watch is set to 6 p.m., you realize that you are six hours different in this case, all right, and each hour is 15 degrees. Number two, it is 7 p.m. on December 24th at 60 degrees west longitude. What time and day is it at 30 degrees east longitude? Pause the video. The answer is C. It is 1 a.m. on December 25th. In this case, we'd be adding six hours, one for each 15 degrees, to come to the answer of 1 a.m. on December 25th. How about a few more questions? Number three, looking at a world map, choose the most correct location for this pair of latitude and longitude coordinates expressed in degrees. If you have a map or an atlas, go ahead and get that out, pause your video, and then proceed. Number three, C, southwest of Africa in the Atlantic Ocean would be closest to the express location of zero, zero. Number four, meridians of longitude on the globe. A, B, C, D, or E. Pause now. The answer is E, all of the above are correct. Meridians of longitude on the globe are the same length north to south. They converge at the poles, they terminate at the poles, and they do intersect the equator. The last big idea that I want to talk about is, is starting to make the connections with what we're learning to contemporary analytical tools. Geographic Information Science, GIS, is analysis with satellite, complex maps, and precise information. It also includes remote sensing. The ArcGIS software, which you can access through Esri, um, you can use it limited online for free. But there are colleges like the Indiana University of Pennsylvania that use, utilize ArcGIS software and are able to certify you in this to actually um, create cartographic maps using the best satellite and database information that we have. The other thing I want to mention is the Global Positioning System, or GPS. These are satellites and tracking stations and receivers that are used all the time for navigation to create accurate digital maps. And when combined with GIS, they can be very precise. And although you might not have used GIS, you know, the Geographic Information Sciences before, or might never use ArcGIS software, we all use GPS in our daily lives. In GIS, there is layering of data. The GIS stores in the information. You can query information, analyze it, and then display it in geographical data. And there's layers. So you can have a layer perhaps of physical geography with mountains perhaps or rivers. And then you can add all kinds of uh, information. Perhaps it is uh, population census information and different shading to be able to make connections between your different layers of data. The layers are compared to show relationships among different types of information. And it can be overlaid in one GIS 
from a variety of different sources through a process that we call mashup. And it looks like this. Here is a layer of vector data cities, a vector data highways, the roster data landforms, and then the vector and roster combined creates this map which shows you a little bit of the topography landforms, your highways, um, and your city locations. So when you look at a map, don't take it for granted that there was an intricate level of data that was created in order to convey a very specific point. This is Social Studies with Mrs. John.